One of the surprising benefits, changes, fruits in me that have come from partnering with folks who work in the anti-trafficking world has been a different understanding and a deeper understanding of what it means to live in the body or in a body. For instance, partnering with Amy Lynch here in the San Francisco Bay Area, who through her organization helps to create pathways to healing for girls who've been rescued out of trafficking. One of the things she said during our conversations was that there are things that happen in the human body, joys and traumas that can't be thought through, they can't be reasoned through, they can really only be worked out bodily. Which brings me to the subject of dance. I got the gift and privilege of seeing Camille Sutton choreograph and dance at the Breath in the Clay a couple years ago. And I was moved not just by her performance and by her choreography, but by the way the room was simply arrested, captured, and challenged to pay attention in a way that music, movies, or any other medium or type of art just doesn't quite get to. I had the pleasure of recently talking with Camille about her work, her history, her philosophy, and her hope for what dance can and should do in our culture, religiously and otherwise. Check it out. Where are you calling me from? Where are you right now? Dallas. You're in Dallas. Dallas, Texas. I'm in my home, our little, our little bungalow in <laughs> East Dallas, just east of the lake. How long have you been there? Yes. In Dallas, we will uh, more or less off and on uh, a couple of stints leaving Dallas, but uh, I've been living here almost 10 years. And or where are you from, I, from though? I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. do you, because this thing happens for the uh, people who are from Texas or who are, or who live in Texas is eventually, it seems like Texas um, takes over and they're like, they could you be mean, from Texas a way of life or way of thinking. What, what do you, I mean? don't know. It just, they could be from anywhere and they're like, ah, we're from Texas. And I'm like, aren't you from Minneapolis? So like, yeah, but we've been in Texas for like four months now. So I'm a no, Texan. I will never be that person. Okay. You can hold me to that. You can hold me to that. I am from Louisiana. That is my home state. My husband is a born bred Texan and he has uh, that attitude. Got it. And I like to remind him that I'm <laughs> not that. from Texas. Got it. Uh, and <laughs> you do move to Dallas for uh, for work? Now, how'd you end up there? Is it just because where his family is? How'd you get there? I got there. Um, I got a scholarship to train at Southern Methodist University. They have a really great school of the arts, Meadows School of the Arts, and they have a great dance program. Um, they're like top five and, really? and, they, and so it was like a really great opportunity to train. And then I met Tyler Sutton right after college hmm. and well, yeah. And so then we ended up, I ended up going to, uh, Houston for a stint for a dance job. And then we moved out to LA for a couple of years, came back to Dallas. Um, but yeah, Dallas is, Dallas definitely feels like home now. It does. Okay, great. Does Shreveport still feel like home? Uh, it is a strange, familiar land. It's, okay. it's, it's really got good. all the hospitality and like comforting, uh, uh, you know, all the, the home warmth vibes and like the food that makes you feel like that you're at home. Um, the po boys and the, the Cajun food and all that. Yeah. Um, but my, my folks live in Dallas now, so it's been really nice. It feels like Dallas is home base. When you moved yeah. to Dallas to you, to to uh you didn't call it study you called it train right you did you like do do you say like I studied did you study dance did you yes. oh yeah you, I can say that interchangeably okay. yeah for sure but it's yeah. different because maybe, there's a body involved maybe yeah I mean I I the, you definitely it's interchangeable for sure um but the I mean I I love school so I was also excited about they have like really strong academics at SMU. So I was very intrigued by that. I got to get a minor in English and that was a lot of fun. Um, and so, yeah, I mean the, the school itself had a lot of great opportunities and then, um, and then Dallas is like the nearest metropolitan city to my hometown. So, uh, it's like two and a half hours. So it made sense. 
stay close to family and whatnot. I'm taking notes um, as we go along so I can catch some 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 questions later on. Um, yeah. So, when, so like, was that like as a program? And here's a, like a real question for folks who like will measure the difference between programs if they're going to go study philosophy or architecture. What makes mm -hmm. for an actual? What makes for like a better uh, or stronger dance program? Like, why is one better than the other for you? Um, faculty. For sure, like the the caliber of the faculty, their their professional experience, um, and then I'd say secondly, like looking at their alumni because the connections you can get from just like visiting alumnus back to the university helps you get jobs and gets okay. you know you get opportunities to work with really great choreographers, great um, get master classes from really great people. Um, and then, yeah, I'd, I'd probably just say the faculty and alumni. Got it. Yeah. And that was the plan for you? Like, as a kid? Like, how do you come into uh, – because not everyone's going to go – like, dan dance, dance is – I don't even know if I'm get this right. But, like, a as an art, like a lot of the arts – it's the thing that like parents or like responsible culture <laughs> or whatever that is uh -huh. will say like, yeah. that's cool that you want to do that. But you uh -huh. know, that's the thing you do after your responsibilities. It's not a thing you like, it mm. shouldn't be a primary, et cetera. Okay. Um, yeah. That's probably true. I think for like traditional, I'd say a traditional American like upbringing, but my, my dad played professional baseball. And so he was very familiar with taking big risk. Yeah to chase a dream and like he could appreciate the idea of like, okay, only like 1% get to do this for a living yeah, and it's totally worth it. Like balls to the wall. Let's like, tr you better train hard. Take yeah, it seriously. Yeah. If you want to do this, do it. So there was like full support to dream, but also like, I'd say that like, um, competitive sports background, um, was was very familiar with like the reality of like hey you're gonna have to work really hard yeah um we'll support you and all of that but like do your part and so, they take a shot when your body allows it right because at some point oh, like as, sure. as a dancer you got one shot yes yeah. yeah which is different than a lot of other academic pursuits that like hey, hey if you want to do english lit if you're 57 you're like i think i'm going back to school you not that you can't go study <laughs> dance at 57 but it's going to be a different tack Oh, for sure. And you'll yeah. have to find a very specific role in dance. Um, like, uh, if you wanted to go back at 57, there's definitely opportunity to, like, create your own movement language. There's choreography opportunity. I'd even say that you could still teach dance if you, like, picked a specific style of dance and, like, mastered it. Yeah. And, you know, so, I mean, it's not that – there's definitely more possibility in dance than people – I mean, it's kind of, I would say that's like an old way of thinking of like, oh, you're done dancing at 30. That's good. Like that's like old school ballet mentality. Like you can't do all the tricks and like the super intense stuff dancing on your toes. But like there's the dance field is so open now. Like um, like Pina Bausch created a piece on like elderly people. She's like a professional. She was a, a German choreographer. Yeah. She set this piece on teenagers and the same piece on um a group of elderly people and it was beautiful. It was like very meaningful. People paid money to watch it. So like, which takes me this, did you have, did you have heroes, um, in your mind, like in your past growing up, did, did you see, did you see dance and you're like, Oh, yeah. this was it the idea of dance? Was it dancing? Was For it like sure. a moment? Was it like a film oh. Were there heroes? Like oh. what, I what, what you. talk to me, tell me the story. Gene Kelly singing in the rain. Really? That's so, that's so <laughs> classic. I know. But that was like, as far as, you know, I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana. The only professional ballet that I saw was like the traveling Russian Moscow ballet. And they did the Nutcracker and they do their tour. Yeah. And I mean, it was cool, but like didn't get me going like Gene Kelly. I'm like, whoa, huh. I want to know what that feels like. Really? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, and I mean, his, his, it was, it wasn't just like the dancing is the whole thing. It was like the, the presence, the command, the, the fun, um, the groundedness. And yeah. I didn't get exposed to like modern or jazz until I was about 15. So it was like my best, the opportunities I had were just ballet. 
So I just did like Royal Academy of Dance training curriculum. And it's like you do the same exercises. You memorize this whole curriculum and Mm. then you have an exam. It's like, it's terrible. Yes. I mean, it's great. It's great because we need it. It's like your fruits and vegetables. (laughs) But I remember the first time I did like a, like a twit like this, like this, the S curve. And I was like, what is that? (laughs) Like, I like how that feels in my body. Or like the first time I did like a contraction where like you like C curve your chest and like you hollow out your, your torso and you do these like turns in like a deep plie. And it's like this like really grounded, totally different philosophy of movement that I was like, whoa, I I love this. Hmm. So um, I'd say heroes are Gene Kelly. Um, I'd say I love Martha Graham. I can't help it. She's Why? great. And that's, uh, she was one of the modern dance pioneers in dance. So like 50s, 60s, she's like, she trained in ballet. Um, she's from California. She was in New York, um, during like Greenville or Greenwich Village era, like when all the artists were all together and she's like, she was exploring psychology in ballets and yeah. like was exploring really interesting, um, getting away from narrative, uh, driven pieces, hmm. but she did do a lot of narratives as well. Um, but I like her stuff because it's extra, just oh, yeah. extra Over in the, the quintessential way. Like, <laughs> like the most dramatic makeup, the, the most uh, like extreme emotions in the body and like torquing the body. Lots of like, like open chest and then like hollowing out the chest and then, and everything's like very percussive and like aggressive and dynamic and yeah. like, uh, everything that everyone else has seen was like, let's lift up. And she's like, let's get down on the ground. Interesting. And so she's got this whole movement style that she created where you're just sitting on your butt and you're doing all this movement in your torso. Mm. Um, what's like happening now spine. in dance for you that is like exciting where you watch you, you, as you're paying attention to the world of dance, what ex- like you're talking, you're talking, you know, Gene Kelly, you're talking about stuff from years ago. What's happening now in the world of dance that, that for yeah. you, like is exciting about the future or exciting about yes. like its potential, I don't know, benefit to the world. So right much, now? Yeah. I think there's so much agency right now and value given to individual improvisational movement. Hmm. Um, and I think a lot of that is because people have their own platforms now and there's this whole community of people who are exploring like conscious movement or, um, just improvisation. Like they're not exploring a particular movement vocabulary. They're just exploring the range of motion in their own bodies. Yeah. And so what's coming out of that is really interesting, fresh new movement. And then, um, it's exciting because, people who are, I guess, specifically who are like kind of at the top, big companies are exploring folk dance, this individual movement exploration, ingenuity, and Mm -hmm. then also taking um, like classical forms like ballet or Graham or um, Fosse or um, Giordano jazz. Like they're mixing like a recognizable folk social dance individual ingenuity and this like recognizable form yeah um and so the convergence of that is just very interesting very cool. um like akram khan is combining indian folk dance with ballet and created an incredible giselle on the national ballet um in england huh. and it's on marquee tv which is a great subscription i would highly recommend um but yeah. yeah so it's like beautiful um yeah i think that's what it gets me most excited is seeing like indigenous forms with this like yes really hybrid yep. movement expression intersections because you mentioned earlier uh martha graham was working in at this intersection like dance and psychology you you end up in spaces intentionally and otherwise uh in in which religion ends up playing some role in what you're doing with dance i want to i want to talk about about it talk about it for a minute um one (laughs) on a scale of one to ten how weird is that experience off like um yeah how how weird and difficult is that uh, like as a dancer 
to like be in religious spaces and have to explain because what I, what you and I've talked about when we've talked about it, like it, just you and I is like there's so much explanation to be done like from from the standpoint of embodiment and dance and like what dance right. has to do with religious practice etc. That it's not sure. like music where folks just assume they know what it is. It's not like language they just sort of do the thing. But with dance, like there's so much translation, there's so much setup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it is it like a does it feel like a slog? Does it feel is it like talk about the experience of being a dancer, it, bringing it dance feels, into the religious world? It. Oh, I think I heard who was it? Was it Jeremy Begbie who was saying he he made an off comment in his talk at Breath and the Clay about being a post Christian or pre Christian culture? Mm-hmm. I feel. Oh man. This is such an exciting, big, like, space to explore. And dance can be so many things, as is language. Language can Hmm. do so many different things um, that I almost feel uh, the maybe the weirdness is just, like, a lack of familiarity. Yeah. And so, for me, I I really enjoy getting to – help introduce dance as a form of expression almost without the without the bitterness of the very sad long history of dance in very particular parts of the world not being celebrated in religious contexts because there are places around the world where dance has always been like a very common regular everyday part of like the religious experience um but Maybe if we're talking specifically about like mm-hmm. traditional American church, sure. Um, uh, it's weird in that maybe the only sampling people have experienced is just maybe not very skilled artists, very oh, genuine, genuine and like honest and I'd say merited individuals who do take the risk to express some aspect of the kingdom, some aspect of the nature of God, maybe just their own expression of worship. There is so much merit and honor that should be given to those people. Um, But But. maybe the weirdness, the weirdness is that those who observe and witness that, that expression don't know that there's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more on the scope of uh, professional movement that, could maybe better articulate hmm. what is being, what is happening in the atmosphere. Um, what maybe, maybe dare I say the spirit of God is saying to that people in that time yeah, that's good. or even more articulately express their own um, worship or offering of praise. So yes. maybe the weirdness is just a lack of exposure. Hmm. And then the only thing I would add is that, dance is a language that doesn't use words. So oftentimes, not many, not very often do dancers get to like get a chance to say, Hey, I'm about to do a movement that um, expresses the joy and the delight of God over his people. That is what I'm about to do right now. Yeah. Although that would be so helpful (laughs) for the people it would be so helpful for the people who don't know dance, who don't know how to read dance, don't know how to interpret moving images. What they see is that person's moving and I'm trying to close my eyes and worship this invisible God. And you're doing something that's visible. That's maybe just pulling me out from a posture yeah. of receiving from God, mostly because they don't know how to receive God through that movement. Yeah, that's good. That's a lot of ideas, but no, I love it. And part of what stuff. part of but part of what you're communicating here is that you actually value the 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 teaching role. Like you actually value the, the opportunity to like bridge a gap there and to articulate that, which is a which is. I feel like all of our responsible. I feel like that's a responsibility of dancers, though. Really, because there's much education, and there's not much education in the American education to let on dance you're not given a lot of exposure what you see is on tv is competitive dancing and it's like the person who does the most tricks and acrobatics wins and that's like the only exposure people have and there's not any exposure to like healing or deliverance or revelation of god through movement so there's just not 
I think there's we have to say, hey, there are different ways of receiving dance. Um, and then, but yeah, but for you, like you, you just said. Cause I, so I used to go when when back in um, uh, I don't know before roads and people could get together. Um, we I used to go to a conference <laughs> called the Festival of Faith and Music. Uh, up in Grand Rapids, and the guy who organized it, a guy named Ken Hafner, would talk about. Um, you do a few things. He would talk about the role and the responsibility of, the, of an audience to show up and be present to a show, which can be very different mm. with dance. But then he would talk about like f- like for artists who can that there was a responsibility to do um, some kind of translating. That not everyone, not everyone mm. has to like, if you, if you're, if you're some kind of, yeah. you know, if, yeah, if you're some kind true. of introverted person, depend, like you might not want to be the guy on the mic being like, so the song, let me kind of break down if, when I was, six, <laughs> I got it. like, it might not go super well, but insofar as it is, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, please, no, no, you're going to make this weirder. But insofar as you, like you have the capacity there is a responsibility somewhere in the relationship between yes. maker and receiver of art to yes. do if you care about like it and they the don't song. get it. Oh, art. Yes. Yeah, like yeah. to to make that to forge that connection, as opposed to and this is part of what I get. It's part of what I value about how you do what you do, as opposed to like what seems to be like the loftier, cooler kid approach to any and all art. It's like I'm going to do what I do, and if you don't get it. That's one. That's too bad for you. And two, it sort of just means that I'm that much cooler, oh. and like there's more. Oh of a... man, what a tragedy! I I agree. What a tragedy because art is meant to serve. Is meant to serve, or you? I guess I believe. <laughs> I, I'm I'm receiving the most life and inspiration, and I'm being fed the most by the idea that art is at its best serving, and so my my desire isn't that that isn't that people would that that people would feel distracted my desire isn't that people would feel um well i was going to say uncomfortable but i think it's great to discomfort people yeah. um but not it's I one thing to be it's one thing to be really, like like made uncomfortable or like kind of be like dissociated or displaced to some degree and that's part of what great art can do is like move you away and make you a little uncomfortable right. but right. but to but right. it's more like blocked right that's the thing it's like this is not for me like it's sure. i can't receive anything from this yes yeah, yeah. totally um yeah i think I was thinking about this morning. I was like, uh, just in just preparation to talk about dance because we don't get it as dancers don't get a whole lot of opportunities to do that. So I was thinking about it, and I was like, why do, why specifically to your question about like the religious context? I think I personally love dance because I think the spirit of revelation is all over it. Hmm. Say more. There's moving images, moving metaphor. There's moving pictures in front of you, the embodiment, the incarnation of the spirit of God. If we're seeing the image of God in these moving people, there's so much potential for individual direct communication between the spirit and the viewer, because no one's telling you what to think. No one, you're not hearing words. You're there's so much potential for like an open way of receiving information as you're watching, hmm. as, you, as you're taking in something through your eye gate, your, your ear gate and your imagination is totally free, freed up. There's so much space, um, to have new connections, yes. uh, uh, to, to, I think that's the biggest thing is, is the new connections hmm. it's because you don't see these, these shapes transition between each other. You don't see this recognizable gesture married with this like abstract turn and there's like there's hmm. a lot of data right there yeah, yeah like this very earthy recognizable thing to this like loftier um maybe more skillful transcendent idea and you're like wow the marriage of that has jesus all freaking over it hmm. that's good <laughs> I, I think that's why i love it so much is because there's so much potential for insight why are people uh, this is too broad. Why in uh, 
relation uh, in like Western white evangelical spaces. Why okay. are those people afraid of their bodies? Like, oh what, my God. What is so that? So unqualified to answer that question. <laughs> we'll talk about it though for a minute because like so much of what you. I have no idea. <laughs> But part of, I mean, you and I, you and I have both been in these experiences in which like, um, uh, I'll give a terrible example that you don't have to do anything with if you don't want to, but it'll be like, there'll be, there is some sort of like some sort of dance performance. And one of the comments or concerns will have to do with the outfits that the young women are wearing and that you can see their butts and their legs or their breasts or, or, and people are like, "Mm." and like, that's the thing that folks it's so triggering. Get, it's so triggered. triggering. Like what is happening there? And 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 how and how do we help? Like what like what happens? Like why is that that way? And then and then My, how how do you go forward from there? Okay, I'm going to answer this. It's not good to like segment ourselves and our identities, but for the sake of answering this question, I'm going to. Yeah. Um as a hmm, Okay, as a daughter, I I am sad that is uncomfortable for for my dad to come to a show and have to like it's uncomfortable he has to work through okay I'm seeing these moving bodies these are grown women these are not little girls at a recital these are grown women yes <laughs> in these very tight outfits yeah and I'm trying to appreciate this art form because I'm showing up because my daughter's here I wouldn't be coming to the show if my daughter wasn't in the show but I'm, I'm see, I'm exposing myself to, um, to, I'm exposing myself to expose bodies Yes. and I'm being told it's okay Yes. to look at these bodies yes. for an extended amount of time and to appreciate their movement, to appreciate the invisible, like the, uh, the, uh, the ingraspable qualities of movement Hmm. but their bodies are like i can very clearly see their body but i'm being told to appreciate the movement of their body and i think for that for for someone like my dad from from professional sports he's like coming to see a show and he's trying his best to appreciate it is distracted by the bodies um i i feel for that person like i really do i feel for that viewer and I don't think it's their fault. I don't think it's the the viewer's fault. Yeah. For feeling the trigger, uh, the discomfort, and that's like a much. I mean, we could go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Um. But, um, I think because, uh, the uh, the other exposure, the other exposures to bodies in movement, where you're given permission to look, um are not always holy and are oftentimes exploitive. If that's the the form or that you're most uh, exposed to mm-hmm. through your eye gate, you've like conditioned your eyes to appreciate the movement of a form for the right. self for the for the sake of gratification, it is very hard to switch that that eye gate yes. and like practice yep. receiving revelation from the Spirit of God. Yep. So it's like you can see where like the the um you can see where the um uh, what's the word this very potentially holy revelatory form mm-hmm. is counterfeited and and really like almost like robbed of a whole people group because the only other exposure they've had to moving bodies is a self gratification. Does that mm. make, make sense? The, the the experience of the like the a positive experience of body they haven't made, in a sense like they haven't had like a positive experience of body that doesn't involve self gratification or selfishness or like pleasures you're not allowed yes. to have kind of a thing. Yes, 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 exactly. I think that's why it's so hard. Um, it, or that's a theory I have. Do you find yourself in positions uh, with regards to like communication and, uh, and and connection where you're working with dancers who are are uh, what, how should I say like undoing like religious trauma uh, like in their own oh, bodies? Yeah. What's that look like? Oh yeah. Oh, 
That looks beautiful. Um, <laughs> it, it looks, uh, okay, so, okay, you, you, let me make sure I understand your question. You're asking me if I've seen dancers working through li- religious trauma. Through yeah, in other words, like, it's, like it's, insofar as, like, some of the some of the contexts I've seen you, oh, well, actually, the only context I've seen you actually dance in have been in, like, relatively religious settings. The stuff yes. you post online is it's dance in a pure form. It's more you know, training stuff, your Instagram page. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm assuming that insofar as you've got dancers who are coming in to work with you in some of these settings, you've got dancers who've grown uh-huh. up in and around religion that tends to at times try to disembody. Um, it right. does tend to right. more so at times yes. like yes. ask women for, for yes. sure to yes. pretend like uh-huh. they're sexless. Um, uh-huh. then you, then you're putting these, these women in a position to be upfront, to move their bodies mm-hmm. with eyes mm-hmm. on them. Yes. Yes. And I'm assuming then the things get unpacked. L- what's it look like? Oh for you? yeah. Okay. Thank you for setting that up for me. I can answer it now. <laughs> Good. There you go. Um, yes. So, oh man, that's a whole thing. The, okay. Feeling the. I think being able to distinguish between what is mine and what is somebody else's as the artist, what is mine, what is my responsibility Mm -hmm. and what am I sensing, feeling from the audience? Yeah. Is that, is that information, uh, my responsibility or is my art, which is coming out of my body Yes. or is being created from my body is my art actually confronting things that specifically in a religious context is actually the work of the Holy spirit confronting things in people. Yes. So knowing, okay, I'm coming in, I'm going to worship in very full bodied expression. I'm going to completely open my chest and close my, I'm going to, I'm going to throw my arms around. I'm going to like let my leg fly and expose like very hidden parts of the body traditionally. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I don't know how else to say that. No, that would totally works. Um, but like, uh, I'm going to do this full body expression because I have the facility to, and because range of motion in the human anatomy is holy. Yes, that's like good. The full range of motion is holy, and there's nothing shameful about um, the full activation of your your physical potential. That's good. But what I what what we feel as um, I guess worshipers, and if you're in a congregational setting, if you're worshiping with a group of people and you're dancing and you feel the, uh uh-oh, the eyeballs of like, what are they doing? Oh no, you're distracting me. That's wrong. Stop, stop. Like we feel all of that Hmm. as a, I mean, we're artists. We we intuit so much. So feeling that and like wrecking and leaning into that without any like a, a, that accusation, shame, um, rejection to not allow that to like get inside, but like to, to know that that's not my responsibility. Hmm. That is the work of that's sanctification. Like that's, that's the work Hmm. of the Holy spirit. That's, that's the, the, that's God's job to deal with what's coming up. Yeah, that's good. In people. Um, my job is to live in freedom and hopefully that will help initiate a conversation of more possible freedom for that person. Yeah. Um, but as far as for the dancer, for the artist, um, I think just being willing to lead by example and being like, Hey, it's okay. You can come out here and expose yourself. And what happens here is, um, you're going to get super free yeah. and you're going to spark a whole lot of freedom conversations for other people. That's good. And you don't have to worry. Like, I think as a leader, you just take the hit and you know, I, I have people who took the hit for me when I was stepping into this and they're yes. like, they're getting the conversation. People are coming over to them and saying, Hey, you should be doing that. Or are you sure? Are you, are, you know, like yep. all that stuff. Yep. Um, I had people who took the hit for me so that I would have space to like go for it and be a, freedom stirring stick in the yeah. room <laughs> yeah there's i mean there really is something you said for that we you know we talk about we, we talk about embodied practice and what have you they you know they had even in religious context there really is something to be said for the kind of um the kind of power exchange that happens in art um it's, it's specifically in terms of like performance oriented art that 
there you, we can talk at it. You can say, mm -hmm. you know, you know, here's some here's some tools or here's some thoughts, but you really do have to one like experience it in your body, specifically yes. if it has to yes. do with your body. If, if it has to do with if, if it has to do with that uh, that something good even if you don't have to, and not everyone does, but even if you don't want to identify it as like, this is a divine thing, or this is a sacred or spiritual thing, even if, even just the notion of like, there is something good n just being communicated Trend, yes. by my, just yes. by my movement and by my yes, body right. yeah. mm -hmm. that someone else doesn't identify as good, just that by itself, yeah. like it's like stirs shame, stirs all kinds of weird stuff. That's right. And, and like, Insofar as you experience that physically, it's not a thought. Yes, it actually you oh, it's feel it. So, so sure. then you actually then have to have an embodied practice of dealing with it, which then ha you have to have wow, you have to great. see someone else do that's it. Great. Like, what's it actually? Because I can mm -hmm. talk to someone all day about like, well, you know, mm -hmm. bodies, etc., and the incarnation, and blah blah blah, etc., and shame and psychotherapy. But unless you see someone. Specifically, if you're a woman mm -hmm. who looks like you and has lived like you lived, carry that with power. Yeah, that's impossible to just talk out of your system. You kind of have to dance. I it would out. agree. I would agree. As silly as it sounds, but um, man, I mean, you could say. I mean, you could say this is what, like, this is our faith tradition, like. Hmm. God could speak to prophets all day long, speak through other people all day long, but until he became a man, became a body. Yes. Like it wouldn't, you know, the 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 authority to say like he is a high priest who empathizes with our weaknesses as a human, that that would carry a very different weight if he never became a body. Yes. Yeah. Um I think yeah, I think that's why there's so much invitation on dance. Hmm. Um, or maybe let's even get away from dance because dance is like it it's a very specific picture in people's minds. Maybe uh it's just movement. Yes. Like people are totally comfortable with the movement of walking and praying. Hmm. People are totally comfortable, even with the idea, I mean, well, maybe not totally comfortable, but I like to listen to worship music while I'm working out. Yeah. And it gives me so much fuel or I like to intercede for other people while I'm dancing. And I've been shook by, hmm. I have been shook. I've been shaken by. <laughs> I've been the, shook. It's fine. By, it all works. I've been shook. I have been shook uh, by just the, the energy and the life that comes from uh, physically working my body while doing it as a sacrifice, as a praise unto the Lord, but then also as, this is a sacrifice of my time and my energy and my thoughts to like give to other people. Yes. And like how that invigorates me so much, um, like practicing even, okay. Like I'll give you a real example. So we did this piece, um, for Easter because yay church loves dances on Easter. Yep. I love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was actually pretty amazing. There's so many dancers dancing on Easter this year and it was very cool yes. to just see that. Um, but yeah, so, um, we're preparing this like 10 minute work. Uh, I'd say it's a contemporary ballet piece mm -hmm. for, um, a church here in Dallas and we're rehearsing it. And, uh, one of the things that are at Zion dance project, our director, uh, Vincent Hardy and Abigail Hardy, they were, they, they prompted us. They said, Hey, as you rehearse this, do this run as intercession for healing deliverance hmm. and for salvation. Um, like actually picture it in your imagination as you're dancing, like visualize these things happening, occurring mm -hmm. in the room while you're doing it. This is just in the studio. Mm -hmm. And so we did this run and I, it was such a, it was such a stark difference. Hmm. Like the intention of doing a piece. The, like the actual experience like of the, it. The, the experience of it was different. Huh. Like the energy and the, the, the gusto and like the, the earnestness of everything became so much more intentional because like every pirouette I'm, I'm practicing entertaining the idea of a supernatural yes. heaven meets earth moment. Yep. Um, 
and maybe that sounds lofty, but like no. we're artists. Like it's like <laughs> why not? Um uh so yeah, so I guess um I forget where we were talking about. No, so good. And just the embodied idea of like, okay, it's not just it's not just, oh, so that you can feel free and good in your body. It's yeah. also into the service of other people. Yes. It gives them permission. And that's part so, of what I was saying is like you have to see someone do that. You can't think your way into an understanding or experience of your body as a good. You can't yeah. like I can again, I can talk to you all day, but the but anything that makes me feel like my body's not good. I yeah. feel in my body and I have to work it out in my sure. body. I mean, this is like, like yeah. I can, I can think, but I can't think myself yes. into an, into a positive experience of my yeah. corporeal physical self. Mm-hmm. I have to physically practice yes. that. Yeah. What hey, yoga? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Hey, yoga. Um, I feel like it's a great, tangible, accessible way for people to like have positive experiences in their body. Yeah. And unfortunately still one that like enough uh western religious minds find weird they don't get the yoga oh. thing it's just it's i say sad. try it she try, try it try it, and try it then, out and then talk to me <laughs> um tell me a little about what you are working on uh over the next like few months and and then yeah. uh yeah what do you what are you working on what are you building what are you are you you're mapping stuff out what's what's going on with you uh-huh. well as of right now just in like the locally um i'm teaching an adult um an adult contemporary class which has just been so much fun um creating movement that is fun Uh (laughs) um and and so that's been great a great little laboratory to just like um explore choreography ideas um and then i'm working on a piece for corpse bara which is a contemporary dance company in canada Hmm. And that's going to be a piece on vulnerability. Ooh, oh, ooh. wow. Uh, very excited about that. Um, and then I'm dancing with Zion Dance Project. We're doing a big summer uh, concert. Cool. So we have a couple, uh, I want to say about 100 dancers coming in from all over the country, coming to Dallas, training, putting together 10 works, putting it on a stage, two weeks. It's going to be bananas. It's great every year. This is the fifth year that we've done it. And it's it's like activation on fleek. There's just so much, so many new connections. Like and if that's not the name, religion. if that doesn't become the name of the project, activation on fleek, I will be slightly, I'm, I'm fine. I'll be fine, but I will be slightly disappointed if activation on fleek doesn't become something you do at some point. <laughs> I really want to see that on the program. I really activation want to see on that on program. I know. Oh, activation um, on fleek. Oh, yeah. Um, where do people find way. you? No. Uh, so if, if folks going to go and pay attention to what you do, follow along with, uh, with your work, with, uh, with your communication, where's the best place for folks to catch up with you? Uh, I'd say just Instagram. Okay. That's where it's at. It is. Like Camille D Sutton. And, uh, and then as far as like choreographing and like making new stuff, I'm just excited to like, take these ideas and practice them in the whole scope of like from yes going to a church and like having an introductory hey let's be nice to our bodies and see what god says to us through <laughs> our bodies to like working with professionals and and giving lots of permission to like activate your spirit and presence in your yes. very technically trained body as well that's really good. um yeah i'm excited about all those things good church <laughs> thank you for your time this is great oh thank you so much justin for talking with the dancer about dance it's a rare treat it's thank a good thing. you and thank you for listening to this episode of the etsy podcast if you'd like to follow up with camille sutton the best place to pay attention to what she's up to is actually probably instagram where her handle is camille d c sutton Camille is spelled with two L's and then D-C and Sutton is S-U-T-T-O-N, Camille D-C Sutton at Instagram. And if you would like to be one of the persons who makes this podcast happen, we'd love to have you on our team. You go to patreon.com backslash Justin McRoberts, select one of our simple tiers and keep this train moving. (laughs) Until next time.